So hello and welcome to this week's angling vlog. This week you join me on the banks of the canal and we're in search of pike. So I was on the canal this morning, just before first light, got them baits in the water, because that is a great time to get a bite. The plan today is to try this swim for a bit. You know, I was on the banks of the river yesterday, it was howling wind and rain, so I took the easy option this morning, picked a swim where I can fish out the back of my car for the first bit, and then if we get no action here, we'll go hunting those pike. Living in the northwest of England, October is a great month for pike fishing for me. The river that I fish and this canal both fish well in October. That time of year there's plenty of colour still in the venue and it's warmer so the pike are more active and it is definitely a good month to be on both venues. Sometimes that can be a bad thing though as you've seen on the channel this year we've been spending quite a bit of time on the rivers so we haven't been on the canal and you really do need to keep in touch with your venue so what it means now is we're coming on here not really knowing where the pike are and not spending time finding the silvers we are playing catch up the target today like always is one pike like i say on the channel if you get one pike when you go or a chance of a pike it's a result so the plan is just to spend the first hour in this swim just chill out take it all in hopefully pick up a pike but if we don't we can then begin to explore so a little tip at this time of year when there's a lot of leaves on the canal and it can drag your float out of position if you place your rod so the tip is under water and if you put your reel handle down you can still have your bail arm open and the line can still come off the spool if you get a run but what it does it keeps that braid beneath the water straight to your float and then down to your lead it means you avoid all them leaves and just a little tip the other good thing about this as well is your rods are nice and visible as you can see there your butt's in the air so anyone walking the towpath can see your rods clearly because believe you me they ain't looking out for your rods so as you can see there the canal very clear today like it does in autumn you can see there your bait all the way down on the bottom so into the second swim of the day and the float has finally gone and a bit of a heavy moment because Mr Swan swam across the line but good to get a pike on the end of the rod only a small one so there we go the first pike of the day little pug nose on it so it'll be easy recognizable in years to come good to get a run it's just about that float going for me I have to excuse the wind noise, it's an autumn blustery day. We're getting straight back and get the rod back out. So that eight pound jack was a nice pike, but unfortunately no more bites were forthcoming. And for you guys who watch the piking on the channel, I think you've guessed by now, piking for me is a relaxing, sit back set me stall outside for fishing but today it's warm and i thought you know what let's get the gear in the car and let's go and have a wander and try for the pike in the afternoon i'm going to try and cover as many swims as i can and with pike fishing what i love about it is you don't need the kitchen sink in there i've got everything i need to be mobile got me unhooking equipment all my terminal tackle dead baits some lures Everything I need is in that. Unhooking mat, which has got a padded bottom, makes it dead easy to sit down on the floor. It's not that cold yet that you can't do that. And I've got my selfie stick and stuff. And then my two rods, you can see there. Nice and mobile. The plan this afternoon is to give each swim 45 minutes and then move and then just work my way around. And hopefully we can find a pike. So looking quickly, you can see there I've got two float setups and those who watch the channel will know that I fish the rivers quite a bit and the canals and rather than having to change two rods over all the time because I don't really fish the ledger on the canal I always leave one rod kind of on a big float like that obviously with that you do lose the finesse a bit but last night I really couldn't be bothered changing them over and I've gone with a pencil float on the other one 
So let's get the rods in and see if we can pick up a pike. So although it's a pain when you're roving, setting up the net should be the first thing that you do. You know, you don't know when you're going to get a run and you can get pike runs seconds after casting in sometimes. So yeah, it's a pain taking it down and putting it back together when you're moving, but always the first thing to get out. So there seems to be an unwritten rule in fishing that fishermen and boats shouldn't get on. We've got the two rods out and as you can see there, there's plenty more colour in the canal. We've just had three barges come through as I was setting up. They're great for piking. Look at the difference in colour from when we were looking at it this morning when you could see your fish on the bottom. Now another thing that people neglect as well is the margin. And as you can see here, that is where my float is. When there's colour in the canal, them pike don't know what side of the canal they're on. They get spooked by people walking the towpath, but they don't really know when it's this coloured, you know, whereabouts they are. And some of the biggest pike I've caught have been a foot from the bank. You've got to make the most of the colour. And there are some stretches of canal that I fish, and we might be trying one of them spots in a bit, where the actual margin is deeper than the rest of the canal. It's just how it was dug and many people turn up and I see them fishing it, cast a far bank and you look and think, if you just had a bit of an explore, you'd realise that the best place to be is down there. So both rods are that close in and that's how we're going to start. So no action in the first swim and it's been beautiful just sitting down on the fast mat admiring the surroundings Autumn is a beautiful time to be on the bank and we really are in the change now. There's berries on the trees and you've got all the colours of autumn. The golds, the browns, the yellows and the leaves just dancing on the top of the water. Kingfish has been through and yeah, it's been a beautiful 45 minutes in the first swim. But we're out to try and find a pike this afternoon so it's time to move. So as you can see on the channel, I am an angler that likes to get out on the bank every weekend at least once and yeah very understanding missus but when i'm at home with the kids and the family i like to keep that to family time and as such you know i do a lot of my prep when i'm on the bank with piking when i'm on the bank you know you're sitting there for a long time so i make the most of that and in this second swim we've got about 45 minutes so i'm going to make up some traces making your own traces is really simple the stuff that I use is this, I've used it all of last year and this, really easy to use with crimps that you can see there, you get 100 in a pack so all the fish that you see on the channel last year and this year was using that and you do save a lot of money as you can see on screen now every trace that you recycle obviously you get rid of the hooks but you get your eye swivel back and your two covers if you think about it, every trace that you make, you get them back. So over the course of years of piking, you save quite a bit of money. But the one bait that I always use when I'm roving is a smelt. It's just got that instant attraction, I feel, and an all-round bait that pike just seems to like and home in on. On this swim, in the third swim, I've decided to go close to cover, as you can see on screen. And yeah, on a canal, you've got to make the most of any cover. It doesn't matter whether it's just a little bit of tree in the water or a reed bed. Those pike will know all about it from an ambush point of view. So on to the next swim and this is the one that is very deceiving. Most people will cast down the middle or over to the far bank which has got cover. But on this canal here when it was dug there's a lot more depth underneath your feet. It's about a foot deeper here than it is on the far bank so what that tells me is any pike that are going to be down there could sit in that foot and any bait fish going over the top you can get and ambush them obviously deeper water gives them more cover as well so in this swim again fishing right in the edge i've fished this canal for a long time i've seen it in its heyday a few years ago where the average size was about 12 pound the last couple of years i've seen it go downhill where you've seen the pike like we had this morning decided to move 
um, try and find a pike and just hunt out some runs in the afternoon and the float's just gone and one hell of a battle straight away got the camera out to film and soon went away an epic fight there are many people out there who catch 20 pound pike regular but for me from the canal a 20 was a dream it was one of them things you come and do the hours you put the hours in but you never know if it's going to happen or not well today it did it's finally happened as you can see on the screen now just over 20 pound and yeah for me a fish of a lifetime hot and bothered done the pictures it's resting in the net again we'll get it out in a minute and we'll have a look at it just going to sit back compose myself and then we'll take a look but yeah you guys come along with me on the blog and you share the special moments the hard times the good times proper 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 buzzing yeah actually shaking i'm not excited about it so we'll give him a bit more of a rest and then we'll take a look at it right so i got that vlogging out of the way then so i didn't spend too long with the pike out of the water it's a fish of a lifetime for me and it's a special one for the canal this is a breeding female most definitely and if the canal's going to recover to how it used to be she's important you can see beautiful pike absolutely beautiful and made up from the canal definitely a fish of a lifetime and thank you all who subscribe for sharing this moment with me i'm buzzing let's get her straight back make sure she's safe so the setup that i've caught that pike on is my 3.25 pound 12 foot rod from cordham in the snapper range that's teamed up with a zelos reel with 60 pound braid the setup is a float stop down to two beads, a pencil float, I've got a Dinsmore egg sinker on there, another bead to not damage the knot, and then you've got the swivel down to the trace. And on there, like you can see, that trusty smelt. Doing YouTube, I do get asked a lot for advice, and one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give people is to enjoy the moment. Those moments that come along in fishing, remember them enjoy them take them in because they go by so quickly in years gone by special captures have just carried on fishing and yeah the day moves on on this session i just sat there the rod's not even in the water just chilled out and took the moment in as you do get a bit older and you fish more often you do realize how special them moments are the moments when you get the fish and the moments after where you're blissed out, you're buzzing, you're on a high. Yeah, they're the ones that will get you through the hard times when you're blanking and that float feels like it doesn't move. But a week on from when I caught that fish and the magic of fishing, still buzzing, still happy, still walking on air, still looking back at my phone to make sure it was real and of course, still need a shave. Again, I want to thank you all who tune in each week to watch the channel, you know, sharing the highs, sharing the lows, and this week, sharing one of those captures that means so much to me. If you are new around here, please leave the video a like and subscribe. Tight lines in your own fishing, and I'll catch you all next week. Tight lines.